Now, if you were like me with the changes in patch 2.4, you got incredibly excited about finally being able to run a physical bow is on. Whether it be multiple shot, guided, arrow, or combining all three together as a strafe bow is on, you were probably thinking, look, the game finally gave me what I wanted. I'm going to be able to take this character into high player density and kill with abandon. Uh, well, that wasn't exactly true, or at least it's not true on very budget gear. I made the mistake of trying this out with the full Mavina's set. Even though this set in its entirety on Tradery only cost me a handful of P-Gems to be able to pick up the pieces that I didn't have, it really just didn't do anything as far as a physical Boazon could. And that's when I realized with a simple addition of a respec, we could go into an actual build that you can legitimately run on a budget start farming high player settings in Nightmare and being able to farm players one in a lot of high valuable area level 85 in hell difficulty and basically do it for almost no currency at all. And that's the Freezing Arrow Amazon. One of the reasons why I was so interested in trying out this build is because A, it would be really nice to actually be able to play a bow Amazon build and not have to wait until the super end game when you have incredibly rare and expensive pieces like a faith bow or wind force and completely maxed out max damage charms across your inventory. Going freezing arrow, especially on Mavina set, lets us capitalize on a few key stats that you get from wearing the entirety of this set that was basically made to exactly run this build right here. For people who haven't seen it, Mavina's set is made up of a Grand Matron bow, a diadem, a kraken shell, as well as a shark skin belt, and battle gauntlets. So let's go over the skills, the stats, and then the gear itself so you have a really good idea of what you're going to need to pilot this build. You understand why we make the choices that we do. For your skill tree, you're going to max out cold arrow, ice arrow, and freezing arrow. Now, you will only ever end up using freezing arrow because it does everything that the other two arrows do, but together and in a bigger package. You're not going to pick up anything from javelin and spear, and you're actually only going to pick up a few key points here in the passive and magic tree. Most notably, you want to max out your pierce skill. The Mavina set doesn't allow you to wear any chance to pierce in any of your other slots, so being able to max out pierce here gives us a 91% chance to pierce, and that's with only one additional plus skill in our inventory. The other really important thing to pick up here is penetrate. Penetrate is going to add attack rating to the build, and this is incredibly important. The reason why Freezing Arrow is so powerful is because when it hits a target or on impact, it's going to explode in a small area around them, adding any skill damage that you have, as well as additional cold damage on the rest of your gear or charms. If you want your arrow to pierce, you need to be able to hit your target. So having high attack rating allows us to hit more targets, giving us a chance to pierce, and then every time you pierce and hit another target behind it, the explosion will go off again. As you're seeing through the gameplay, especially when we have high densities of monsters walking in the same area, you're going to see multiple explosions going off and the damage output multiplying by up to five considering you can pierce through and hit five targets. You'll actually see that our overall damage output lowers by quite a bit when there's only one to two monsters that are spaced out, and that's because there's only one explosion per target since they're outside of each other's radius. So you always want to make sure to try to keep monsters as close together as possible, perhaps rounding them up before engaging and then blowing them all to smithereens. After pierce and penetrate, the only other important things to pick up would be one point in each of your dodge skills. We are going to gain additional Amazon skills from the full set bonus, so you're going to be sitting somewhere around 40 to 50% chance to dodge on each one of these skills, depending on which one you're looking at. The only thing that I would say is that you don't necessarily have to worry about your critical strike chance or fully maxing out your penetrate, although your dump points do go here if you're staying as a pure cold bow is on. If you're interested in doing it in a little bit higher level with better gear, you can also pick up Exploding Arrow and Fire Arrow, making this a 100 point build and being a hybrid Amazon. I would always recommend still only focusing on the cold damage. It is nice to have the Exploding Arrow if you run into any immunes or if you're in particularly large amounts of cold resistant monsters, especially in group play. For our attributes, we're only going to put in enough stat points so that we can use our gear and then everything else is going to be dumped into Vitality. 
This build has an incredible amount of survivability, so if you're having a lot of mana issues and want to add a little extra points into energy there, or if you are looking to bump up your attack rating, let's say you don't have enough gear to support having a high attack rating, you can also put additional points into dexterity. The physical damage on your attack isn't nothing. It is there and you are piercing quite often, so you're typically getting four or five hits out of each attack. And it helps to increase your DPS in general, but I wouldn't say focusing on your physical damage is really the thing that you want to do here. We really want to max out the cold damage on our skill and add any cold damage that we can, because again, that's going to add to your explosion damage. So now that you understand the skills that we need and the attributes that we have, let's go over why the Mavina set is just so powerful on this build. The bow starts off with 40 IS and with a shell rune in it, you bump up to the nine frame attack point. If you have 20 IS anywhere else, you don't need to put a shell rune in here. So if you were having difficulties with life leech or mana leech, you could throw in a perfect skull to start off an Amrune for additional life leech. Or if you're looking for more survivability, putting a Nefrun in here for knockback or an Ethrun in it for minus target defense will increase your chances of hitting targets and increase the chances of you piercing by proxy, thus increasing your overall damage. You'll also notice that our overall set, so the gold text here, is going to give us three to our Amazon skills, flat attack rating, additional defense, strength, and dexterity, 50 all resistance, and 100 magic find. That, with the other stat points across the gear, you're actually going to be sitting on 100 all resistance with just using this set alone. So even in hell difficulty, as long as you've done all of your Anya quests, you're going to be pretty tanky, considering most bow builds typically will struggle with getting all res onto their kit. The two other interesting things I wanted to point out here is the blue text fire magic arrow and then the green text chance to cast Nova on striking. The fire magic arrow only works when you use the bow to shoot off a regular arrow. So on right click, I'll demonstrate it here. You'll see that our attack is normal and we're shooting off a magic arrow. The important thing here is that this is going to convert some of our physical damage to magic damage, as well as not use any arrows at all. In fact, if I were to take off my arrows, you'll see that I can still fire my bow. This is probably one of the cooler benefits of using the Mavina's bow, is that you effectively have infinite ammo in case you're trying to finish off a boss pack before going back to town. The chance to cast Nova on striking really doesn't amp up your damage, at least not in the late game. But what it does do is every time that Nova goes off, it's going to put most monsters hit by it into hit recovery. So again, increasing your overall survivability. The Didem is going to give you additional increased attack speed. I have an all res with min damage jewel in this, but putting in magic find is definitely a great option, as well as a tier rune to get you back mana per kill. Again, if you're struggling with mana before you have an insight on your mercenary. The added plus one all skills and the 25 all res here is huge because this is a plus skill build. The more plus skills you can get on it, the stronger you are in general. And then the armor, again, I have a minimum damage tool in here. I was originally running this as a physical build, but being able to put a perfect topaz in here for additional magic find means on the core Mavina set, you'd be sitting on 148 magic find, which if you add on a Geeds in your inventory and a couple other pieces, you can easily stack two, three, or even 400 magic find on this build and still farm really good areas on lower player counts. Belt giving us run walk and mana leech is going to help out with our mana problems as well as that all res. And then the reason why Mavina set is so good on the ice bow is on. Not only do the gloves themselves give us an additional source of cold damage without the set bonus, the added cold damage on your gloves from set bonus and the plus 20% cold skill damage are massive boosts in general to the overall damage output. Not only that, any additional source of cold damage that you have will actually add to the length of time that freezing arrow freezes your target for. Even though the skill only freezes for four seconds, it adds all other sources of chill length. So right now with just the Mavina set, we freeze targets for upwards of 10 seconds while we mow down the rest of the pack. For the rest of the gear, I'd say the only thing that is very important to consider here is running something like a Harmony Bow on Swap. Now, the weapon base that you use it on really doesn't matter. It's just Tier Ith, Soul, and Co. You can farm this in Nightmare. I built this into a really nice Matriarchal Bow because we initially tried it out on an Act 1 Mercenary so that we would have Vigor Aura up all the time. The benefit of you running it yourself is that you can actually have the Vigor Aura while you're in town. Your Mercenary's Auras don't buff you in town. And on top of that, you don't have to worry about the Mercenary being in range of you for the aura itself. So while you're running around and attacking, you'll obviously be on your Mavina setup. In the moment that you want to get some distance, you swap over to the Harmony and look how fast we're running on this build. It's actually kind of nuts though how much mobility you have considering we don't use teleport. 
for the rest of our gear, I'm currently using a cat's eye. Again, increased run walk speed, additional increased attack speed, and then big dexterity here gives us additional attack rating and chance to hit. I am using a Raven Frost. Again, that cold damage is added onto our explosion. Big AR and dex for additional chance to hit. And then cannot be frozen, which is just so important, as well as a pretty big boost to our mana cost, considering in the earlier levels, even though they reduce the cost, Freezing Arrow still costs a decent amount of mana, and you can be a bit mana hungry before you have Insight. Then on your other ring, you want to put anything here that's either going to add additional damage, attack rating, cold damage, if that is an option for you, res, dual leech, or magic find, which are probably the best stats to put on here, considering this ring is basically free. In the later game, being able to put on a skill ring, especially a Stone of Jordan, would be a great option. And then let's talk about the charm inventory. I'd say that there are four different types of charms that are really important for you to get the most out of this build. One, faster run walk charms. Now you'll see that we have a couple different options here and the best options would definitely be small charms. Not only can they get additional resistances on them like this one, you can also get run walk charms with additional cold damage, which will add on to our explosion damage. Obviously, an Annihilus and or a Torch go a really long way of bumping up our damage. Anything that's going to give you life or increase to magic find. A Gage charm. Obviously, I hope you have a better Gage than I do. And then something very interesting. While the best skillers on this build are obviously bow and crossbow skillers, I'd like to say one this build doesn't require you to max out your bow and crossbow skills, even when you want to be farming in higher player settings in hell. Adding on a passive and magic skiller, which literally costs nothing, people give these away for free, increase some very important stats that you might find difficult to manage on earlier game gear, and that's bumping up our attack rating from penetrate, our pierce chance from the skill pierce, as well as adding a lot of great survivability across a dodge, avoid, and evade. So if you have nothing else to throw onto the build, using something like a passive and magic skiller is a really good placeholder until you can bump up your damage more significantly with bow skillers or just replace all of it with magic find. The third set of charms are just pure survivability, so these would be life or resistance charms, anything that you could put on here that would go a long way to increase your survivability, especially if you eventually get off from the Mavina set and lose that 100 all res. And then lastly, any charms are going to add cold damage. I've said it a couple times, but this will add on to your explosion damage, and every time you pierce, it will add on to the additional explosions there as well. So one of the best ways to up your damage isn't actually to put on max damage or attack rating, but is instead to get something like this, where you have that attack rating for your chance to hit, and then big flat cold damage as much as you can possibly stack. For the mercenary, when I was farming in hell, I still found it difficult to stack attack rating, so we're actually using a Blessed Aim Mercenary. If you have better gear and you're hitting that 95% chance to hit, or you're just a couple levels higher than us, we're only level 82 at this point, you could definitely swap over to a Might Mercenary to increase their damage, especially against cold immune monsters. Or if you want to get real fancy at the end, putting a source of fanaticism like Faith Bow onto an Act 1 Fire Mercenary so that you're going to hit really fast increased attack speed breakpoints, and she's putting out a good amount of damage as well. For the Mercenary right now, we're using pretty baseline budget gear. So we have a non-ethereal insight, a treachery and a mid-roll armor, and then something like a Crown of Thieves. I like Crown of Thieves because it gives that flat life, which he actually benefits from, as well as a massive amount of lifesteal so that he can keep himself alive. Anything like a Talrosh's helmet or eventually an Indarial's here would go a really long way. Now let's talk about farming spots. In this beautiful Shining Goddess absolutely obliterates Nightmare Cows. And if you go, well, yeah, sure, everything should obliterate players one Nightmare Cows, Mac. Well, here you go. Now this is her obliterating players eight cows on a build that I put together for a literal handful of P gems and random scraps I had from my other character. Not only does she do players eight cows in nightmare very well, but even in hell, I'd say that she performs very well upwards to players three. Now you are going to have to group up cows more efficiently and make sure that you're shooting into large concentrations of cows in a singular area to maximize your total explosion damage per arrow shot. But if you're willing to try a little bit harder, she continues to excel. On top of that, she now gets to farm one of the best new area level 85 areas, and that's the Arachnid layer. While we were testing, the Arachnid layer was constantly spawning with anywhere between four to six elite packs. And then on top of that, there's two reasons why she excels here. One, no cold immunes to speak of. 
it's right off of the waypoint and you're able to move through it with your massive mobility. And two, most of the monsters here either are the drop bats, which literally don't engage you, maggots, which try to stay clumped up together and keep a distance from you, and spiders, which can definitely run towards you, but after taking a bit of damage, begin to run away and then clump in a corner. All of these monsters together mean that each arrow that you shoot is going to explode a ton of times per shot, drastically increasing your overall DPS. And then on top of that, when you do have maggots that spawn young, each one of their young will cause an explosion if the arrow passes through them as well. On top of it, you get a nice golden chest at the end. Just remember that magic find doesn't affect your drop there. It's all about player setting. Other areas where I think that this build excels, especially on the budget version of it, is obviously farming something like Pindle, stack as much faster run walk and as much magic find as you possibly can, and then walk up and absolutely obliterate this skeletal fool and just watch the super rare items roll in hand over fist. A surprisingly good option, while your mercenary won't survive here, is actually the Traven Call. There's only one council member that spawns as immune to cold in the Traven Call. Normally, you're able to actually shoot the groups of council members through the openings in their temple steps, or if you need to run in there and just face tank, you're able to evade the majority of their projectiles, and again, your res is in a really good place without having to stack any additional res. Your mercenary probably isn't going to survive, but that's fine. Stack magic fine and kill these guys to your heart's content and just ignore the cold immune one and move on to your next farming area. Another great place, and I think I'm the only person advocating for this one right now, is going from the inner cloister waypoint into the cathedral. Not only in the waypoint courtyard are you typically going to get one to two boss packs, the next area is full of tainted, fallen shaman, ghosts, and has a super unique. Killing all the monsters here is very easy since there tends to be a lot of density. And then while Bone Ash is actually immune to cold, he's a relative pushover and you can gun him down either just leaving on freezing arrow if you're super lazy or swapping over to normal attack so you get that magic arrow proc from your Mavina's bow. All in all, I was incredibly surprised and impressed with this gold glowing platinum angel. She functions so well on gear that you have probably skipped by picking up at this point because there's almost no market for it. The best part about her too is that the sky is the limit. There are so many amazingly powerful items that you could build into. If you had the options available to you, you can even use Lycander's bow here. You could be using a Weissen draw that gives you a lot of minus enemy cold res as a starter version. You can eventually build a mist or build into an ice when you're in the end game. Put on a Nightwing's Veil on the helmet, a four faceted armor with 100 life on it in your chest armor. Quite literally, the options available to you just keep ramping and ramping up in her total clear speed. But I would just say that focusing on finding an area that you can farm well and then stacking as much run walk and cold damage in your charms as possible to be able to easily increase your damage and then worry about some of those endgame gear pieces later when you're trying to flex on P8 Chaos or something. All in all, I hope that this goes a long way to help provide people with good options that they can actually try out on the Boazon, a reason to use the Mavina set at all, as well as being able to play with some of these builds that don't typically get into the spotlight, but I think perform incredibly well. Honestly, I was blown away when I first moved from multi-shot over to Freezing Arrow and began annihilating monsters that I was struggling to kill just before the respec. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on this video. It would help me out a ton. We are so close to the 6,000 subscriber count here on YouTube, and I just wanna keep seeing that number go up and up and up so that the algorithm picks up these videos and shows them to more people who might be struggling and not really have any inspiration for good builds to try out. And maybe this is the thing that helps them to continue to enjoy the ladder. Thank you so much for watching this video. Honestly, I appreciate you all so much and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.